And thanks again to the foundation for the opportunity to, to talk to everybody. Uh, yeah, so I'm Dean Freestone. I'm the CEO and a co-founder at SEER. At SEER, we've got a really simple mission to empower people living with epilepsy to have more control of their most valuable assets, which of course is their health and their time. Time is really important because it's taking way too long for people to reach effective treatments. Obviously the health metrics are just not acceptable with a high level of misdiagnoses and, and of course the, um, the treatment gap with people having uncontrolled seizures. Uh, but I think we really need a power, uh, sorry, a paradigm shift to empower patients to have more control, to have more access to data as we've heard about. So physicians and people living with epilepsy can make objective decisions. So at SEER, uh, we're striving to enable just that through opening up access to monitoring. So we have two main products, SEER Home, which is a reinvention of video EEG, open up access in the home environment um, for epilepsy diagnostics and characterizations over the time course of days to up to a week. And we also have SEER Health, which is um, like Mateo and Embrace, is remote patient monitoring over the time scale of months to years. And the main feature of SEER Health is seizure forecasting. I'm gonna talk about each of these products in turn uh, and just give you a bit of a snapshot of some of the technical challenges that we're able to solve to bring these products to life. So first I'll talk about SEER Home. So SEER Home is a reinvention of video EEG and we were been, we've been striving to try and break through some of the bottlenecks and lower the burden in being able to provide this objective data to people. Um, so SEER Home provides clinical quality video EEG monitoring, but breaking, breaking open the bottlenecks to be able to open this up um, lower the threshold so it can be acquired in a far more accessible format in people's homes. It's recently become available in the UK and in the coming months it'll be available here in the US. Uh, but our primary proof point for the value of the technology has been achieved in Australia where we've now completed over 75,000 days of clinical monitoring in people's homes. Uh, that's just in the last few years. So to give you an idea of scale that we're operating at right now, uh, we currently see a volume of patients that's larger than the entire hospital system for video EG monitoring in Australia combined together and then doubled, probably tripled. Okay, so that's, that's equivalent to about a 100 bed epilepsy monitoring unit. So one of the principal challenges that we've had to solve in bringing this to life at this type of scale is how do we actually manage the high volumes of data flowing through our systems? And the only way that it's possible to do that is to be able to use advanced machine learning techniques and AI and computer vision. So as I said, data is collected within the home environment and then data is automatically uploaded to the cloud. On upload to the cloud, our computer vision systems, which we call SEER Assist, automatically curate and annotate the data um, for our technicians. So their job becomes easier, more efficient and more accurate. So it's an assistive technology. And so first the algorithms look at the data and the second stage is a technician review. And the technicians are able to curate the data further. And then it goes on to our physicians that do the final interpretation and the reporting side of things. Now at SEER, we have a bit of a philosophy that we leave no data behind. Every click is valuable. And we wanna be able to encode the expertise of our clinical team inside the algorithms. So all of that data within the cloud environment is able to be fed back through for every single patient so that we are able to enhance the AI systems. Um, and I, here's, a, here's a quick snapshot of some of the data now. So we've reached a level with this high volume of data, probably the largest curated epilepsy data set in the world where for seizure detection, we've already surpassed, well, I believe we've surpassed human level um, accuracy. And I think what's most impressive here is our ability to be able to leverage this data to start looking at labeling some of the more subtler subclinical activity that's very inefficient for a person to be able to annotate and um, by far surpass human level accuracy. Now, I think one of the great things about having so much data at hand and, and to be able to leverage machine learning is starting to look at what we can do with unsupervised machine learning now, see what the algorithms can tell us about the data. Um, and we'll see if this video works. Okay. Um, if we're able to click on this video here, I'm not sure if we can do it from the back end there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so this is a visualization of a large neural network that we use for the computer vision problem. And the different clusters of data there represent phenotypes from the various patients within our cohort. And one of our goals at SEER now is to be able to start looking at this data, seeing what the algorithms can tell us about phenotypes so we can start thinking about therapy recommendation systems. 
So if we see a de novo patient come through, we would like to see if they belong within a particular cluster here where there's an effective treatment and we can match that new patient to that group of people so we can get to, to um, an accurate treatment faster. And if you look at one particular cluster here with a focal epilepsy and then a second one, um, we can see that there's a very subtle um, uh, sharp there, a spike by discharge, uh, and the algorithms are very effective at pulling that out. Um, one of the other advantages of having such a large data set is we start to, we get an opportunity to start thinking about other aspects of um, equity within this data, looking at social determinants of health within the patient cohort, looking at its effectiveness across different genders, races, races age, ethnic groups, so that we can make sure that we can open up access to people at an even level um, across the world. That's gonna be really important in the future. So now I'm just gonna change gears a little bit here and talk about CA Health. Oops, it's automatically gone back. Let's go forward. Um, CA Health, um, which is remote patient monitoring for epilepsy management over the time course of months to years. Again, this is um, the centerpiece of this is seizure forecasting. And it's, it revolves around a mobile app that's accessible to people living with epilepsy uh, and with wearables and other devices like uh, EpiMinder into the future. And so Mark spoke about cycles in seizures. This is an example piece of data from NeuroVista. This is one week of recording and we see the gray bars representing the background activity, spike rates and the red dots are times when seizures occurred. The striking thing about this is there's no clear relationship between when the seizures occur and the background activity. But when we zoom out in time, looking at the data over two months, we start to see a three week long cycle where the background activity is going up and down and nested within this three week cycle, we see the circadian rhythms, which gives it that sharp toothy effect there. And so, as Mark said, these cycles are very patient specific and we need to learn them for each individual. Um, and because there's multiple cycles that are coexisting, it's not intuitive for people to realize um, these within their own, pattern, with their own pattern. So we need data to be able to reveal these things. We've been working really hard over the last few years um, in partnership with the Epilepsy Foundation, uh, Mayo Clinic and King's College London with the My Seizure Gauge project to take this idea to life and open up access uh, through wearables. And we made some really great progress with this by being able to measure seizure cycles through heart rate and wearable devices with our partnership with Fitbit. And this was featured on the cover of eBioMedicine with this really cool picture of relating the heart and, and the brain together. Um, so we're really proud of this work and we've been able to map these seizure cycles to a seizure risk likelihood. And we see an example here, the higher the line, the higher the risk. Uh, you'll see when seizures occurred by the triangles at the top and the red triangles show when seizures occurred in a high risk phase. Uh, you would note that not all seizures occurred in a high risk phase, but most of them did and hardly any seizures occurred in the low risk phase. So we think this adds a lot of value to people living with epilepsy. Uh, we think that it can give them a much higher quality of life, allow them to engage in usual day to day activities. Um, maybe it's as simple as being able to go out with more confidence and catch up with loved ones. Um, or we think it can um, make major improvements to those folks who aren't receiving effective treatment. Now this technology is available today. So you can go to the um, Google Play Store or the App Store and download the SEER app. Your patients can get this and there's seamless integration with Fitbit. Um, and like I said, it's available now on a global level. We've got about a thousand people that are getting prospective seizure forecasts and it is making impact. We're having people being able to plan holidays and activities and um, we're really excited about this. So please help us spread the word. Uh, with that, I think I'm done.